Hello. The following contains content that my human does not own personally. Content such as music, videos, sound, or images. So please, give my human a break and not give her a strike. Seriously! Really? Touch <laughs> my... What is up, people of the internet? My name is Freelancer Amber, and welcome to another Death Battle reaction video. This reaction video is <laughs> its gonna be one hell of a fiery one. It's gonna be Natsu Dragneel from the Fairy Tale Guild versus Porkus DAs of the Whitebeard Pirates from One Piece. Now, I'm kinda like, now, nah, for my thoughts would win, I'm kinda conflicted on this one because I'm just getting this, this weird feeling that somehow, in some way, Ace is going to win this. But I'm rooting for Natsu on this one because the one advantage he has is he eats fire. But I'm but I'm rooting for Natsu, but I'm going to call it half maybe 50% call it that Ace would win this because well, I just have this weird feeling. And for bringing back a dead guy to be in this death battle, I mean, hey, in the Carolina versus Meta death battle, I mean, the Meta's dead, but they brought, but they still managed to do it, the death battle thing, what, much of a jig or whatever, but still, I'm still rooting, for, I'm rooting for not doing this one, so, uh, I got nothing else to talk about, so let's get on with this fiery death battle in three, two, one. Here we go. In ancient times, the Greeks believed everything to be made of four elements. Earth, air, water, and the most difficult to control, <laughs> fire. Oh, yeah. Well, these two combatants have mastered the art of playing with fire. <laughs> Natsu Dragneel, the dragon slayer mage of the fairy tale guild. Yep. And Porkas D. Ace, the fear oh, pirate Porcus. known I as Porcus. Fire Fist. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a, a death, death battle. battle. Odd. So we're going for that kind of fighting style. In his infancy, Natsu Dragneel was a pretty normal child living in a pretty normal village. And then a bunch of dragons toasted the town and killed everybody, including him. The end. I didn't know that. I need to be, I should start reading the manga. Fortunately, Natsu's older brother, Zeref, survived. Same thing with that! Horrified by the violent fate of his family, Zeref desperately mm. sought a way to revive Natsu. Eventually, he discovered the connections between life, death, and magic, and became obsessed. That would explain why he was such and a crybaby so when he became was Natsu. the most evil and powerful mage ever, cursed to live forever and ruin everyone's lives. But everything worked out, I guess, because he brought Natsu back. Just one catch, Natsu had to be revived as a demon, though this gave him the EMD. potential to become even more powerful than Zeref. Unfortunately, Zeref had become incredibly dangerous to be around. Fearing for his brother's safety, he left Natsu in the care of his friend Igniel, who just so happened to be the Fire Dragon King. <laughs> Natsu got adopted by a freaking dragon. Kinda weird since the dragon There's killed him in the first place in his family, but whatever. Dragon Dad ended up teaching little Natsu Dragon Slayer magic, a school of mystical martial arts developed specifically to kill dragons. <laughs> hey, man, it's really back and forth with these dragons, isn't it? Regardless, Igniel eagerly accepted his role as adoptive father. Aww. He taught Natsu how to read, write, and fight. But then when Natsu came of age, Igniel suddenly sent him through a time machine and poof! Before he knew it, Natsu was trapped 400 years in the future and abandoned by the only father figure he ever really knew. I know that feel, little buddy. I know that feel. I'm kind of confused on of this. Of course, it was sake. all part of Igniel's plan to save the world, but at the time, Natsu didn't know that. Fortunately, it wasn't long before he found a new home and family among the mercenaries <laughs> of the Fairy Tale Guild. Yeah. yeah, it turns out being a demon trained by a goddamn dragon made Natsu pretty effective as a bounty hunter. Oh, yeah. Natsu possesses superhuman speed, impressive strength, and unbelievable durability. He has superior senses, such as sight and smell, along with a mastery of hand-to-hand -hand combat skills. I need to read the manga. Mix all that up with his fire dragon slayer magic, and you got one fiery cocktail that'll knock just about anybody on their ass. As the name suggests, Fire Dragon Slayer magic revolves around conjuring and manipulating fire. A prime example would be Natsu's signature move, the Fire Dragon's Roar. Where he literally shoots fire from his mouth. 
or he can engulf his hand in flames for the devastating Fire Dragon's Iron Fist. You know, we're gonna be saying fire a lot uh, this episode. Oh yeah. Yep. Natsu <laughs> has well over two dozen different ways to incorporate fire into his martial arts, two but dozen. his real strength comes from a move nobody ever really expects. Uh, yeah, he eats fire. Like all mages in the fairy tale world, Natsu has a limited pool of magic, but consuming fire actually replenishes it. Not only that, he can consume a few different types of elemental magic as well, including lightning. Talk about a shocking appetite! And because this is anime, eating lightning gives Natsu access to an all new form. Cause it's anime. Lightning Fire Dragon. Anime with logic. This, Natsu's abilities are enhanced with electricity, giving him a brand new element of power. Mm -hmm. To increase his fire abilities, Natsu can enter Dragon Force. This greatly increases his Dragon Slayer magic and physical prowess, bringing Natsu closer to the strength of a full grown dragon. He's even starting to look like a dragon now. I think that's like an awful dramatic reminder when he looks at himself. <laughs> but when his Dragon Slayer abilities aren't enough, Natsu enters his strongest mode yet, Fire Dragon King Mode. In this form, Natsu has access to techniques only the most powerful of dragons could wield, I think it's such only as manga. the Demolition Fist and the Fire Dragon King's Roar. At his strongest, he can wipe out exactly 973 soldiers all at once and create massive explosions so big they could wipe out a whole town. Yeah, I need to read the Natsu's manga. Natsu's raw power is extraordinary, both magically and physically. He's strong enough to lift an enormous stone slab several times larger than himself. Comparing this stone <laughs> to Natsu's height and compensating for the density of the stone, it's likely this block weighs about 135 tons. Damn. Talk about never skipping arm day. He's also fast. He's fought in multiple battles where he's moved faster than the eye can see, putting him well over 9,000 miles per hour. That is and fast. when fighting opponents even faster than him, Natsu has used his keen observational skills and indomitable willpower to predict their moves and defeat them. He's pretty clever in battle, which is surprising given how headstrong and stubborn he can be. <laughs> like any real fighter, Natsu prioritizes offense over defense, running in guns or, I guess, arms blazing. Except this impulsive approach to fighting often leaves massive amounts of collateral damage in his wake. Remember how we mentioned his firepower could wipe out a whole town? Well, sometimes that's not completely intentional. In <laughs> fact, this hasty attitude may be his greatest weakness. Nah, his greatest weakness is how easily he gets motion sick. Yeah. Put him on a moving car or boat and he'll be hurling in a matter of seconds. That flying cat following him around should start carrying vomit bags. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the stranger downsides of Dragon Slayer magic. Natsu's dragon-like senses can overload his semicircular canals, creating a feeling similar to vertigo. But more <laughs> importantly, Natsu has a bad habit of burning through his available magic rather quickly. Yeah, but who cares? He can just chow down on some tasty flames or lightning to replenish his magic. Just one problem. What? Consuming any fire or lightning that Natsu has created himself will not replenish his reserves. Oh, yeah. Huh. Oh, well, Natsu's still a badass. <laughs> he really is the fairy tale guild's trump card for whenever things go south. And he continues to fulfill his old dragon dad's wish of making the world a safer place. Oh, yeah by setting it on fire. <laughs> yep. I think it's time we stop playing around. Let's get down to the real fight. I'm gonna shatter you into a million pieces. Okay, you know, before we continue this, I just want to say something I forgot to say at the beginning, so I would want to apologize for any Ace fans out there. I mean, I, what I, from what I said before about, um, that, you know, because he's dead in the show and, and all that. But, but yeah, but I'm still... But again, I still have that weird feeling that somehow Ace will win this. But I'm still uh, rooting for Natsu on this one. I mean, I like Ace. I, I just like, I just kind of like Natsu. But anyway, let's get back to this. Wealth, fame, power. Gold D. Roger, the King of the Pirates, obtained this and everything else the world had to offer. And then he was brutally executed, leaving everyone to run <laughs> off searching for the King's long-lost treasure, the One Piece. However, unknown to most, Roger left behind an heir, albeit unborn. Terrified the Marines would execute Roger's son as well, the child's mother held her pregnancy for a total of 20 months. Huh? 20 months! Holy mother of hell! <laughs> How does like... that even happen? Sheer have... inconceivable willpower. Though she died in childbirth, her last act was to give her newborn son his name, Porcus D. Ace. Soon after, Ace was adopted by an old acquaintance of his father, Monkey D. Garp, and raised alongside Monkey D. Luffy and his childhood friend, Sabo. 
Over time, Ace, Luffy, and Sabo grew very close, considering themselves brothers and together forging a lifelong pact. They would forever live life as free as possible. And for Ace, that meant following in his father's footsteps. It was the pirate's life for him. Belly. Ace was a natural on the sea, thanks to his incredible strength and combat oh, aptitude. Got the currency named he quickly Belly. learned his way around the ocean, becoming the captain of his own ship in just a year's time, and eventually joining the ranks of the deadliest pirates around. He even claimed one of the world's most sought-after treasures, a devil fruit. In the One Piece world, if you eat yourself a devil fruit, you get yourself a superpower. In Ace's case, he ate the Flame Flame Fruit, which, guess what, granted him the power to create and control fire. But with new power comes a buttload of badass new ways to kill people. Oh yeah. Get this, this guy's gun hands are actually handguns. I mean, I guess that's accurate. <laughs> that would be Ace's fire gun ability, and it's just one of many attacks that Flame Flame Fruit's power provides. Man, I love my gun leg and all, but now I think I really need me some gun hands to go along with it. Try gun stick. Sometimes I really, really wonder about where you came from. <laughs> the front door, like every day. Come on, Wiz, pay attention. Ugh. Anyway, these fire abilities are what earned him the nickname Fire Fist Ace. Because he can turn his punches into blazing balls of red hot fire. <laughs> Forget gun hands. Give me some of that. Manipulating fire comes easy to Ace. He can conjure up enormous pillars of flame so intensely heated they can incinerate enemy projectiles, acting as a sort of fire shield. He's also got some really weird names for his attacks, like Firefly, Fiery Doll, and St. Elmo's Fire. <laughs> Man, when did Elmo become a saint? <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, that's referencing weather phenomena, where plasma appears to discharge a top appointed object. Ace's version is not like that at all. Instead, he conjures up two javelins made of pure fire and hurdles them through enemies, burning them inside and out. Yeah, I'm gonna go with his version. <laughs> Firefly and Fiery Doll is a combination attack where he creates several small balls of green plasma which surround a foe before detonating in a massive series of explosions. <gasps> he does have one attack with a really cool name though. Oh, what's that? Crossfire, you get caught up in the crossfire, crossfire! <laughs> of course. However, Ace's most powerful attack is undoubtedly his great flame commandment, Flame Emperor. Which is a pretty big name for what is essentially a fiery spirit bomb. But good God, if you see that thing coming your way, don't even bother trying to run. Nope. You're dead. There's even more. See, the devil fruit Ace discovered was of a rare breed, a Logia fruit. Because of this, Ace also gained the ability to transform his entire body into fire. Oh. When he's in flame on mode, physical attacks pass right through him like he isn't even there. And if his fire body is somehow messed up, like someone dropping a giant candle snuffer on him, his true human body would be totally unaffected. Actually, since receiving this power, Ace has only been badly hurt by other Logia users wielding an element with an inherent advantage over fire, such as magma or water. Man, it's like he's invincible. In a way, but it's not an automatic defense. Ace must make the conscious decision to transform his body. But thanks to his blindingly quick reflexes, he's able to avoid almost any attack. He can even react quick enough to avoid a shot from a sniper. In this instance, he was reacting to the gunman in view. Assuming this gunman was professionally trained, Ace would have needed to react in about a quarter of a second. And that's but fast. you need speed when your fire fist can blow apart five ships all at once? <laughs> Considering ships like these would likely be constructed of teak wood, to accomplish this, Ace would need to hit each ship with at least 15,000 pounds of force per square inch. Fuck, boy! So getting hit by Ace would be like getting hit with a wrecking ball. And when he throws more fire into the mix, he can wipe out an entire town. Ace's last extraordinary quality actually has little to do with fire at all. If there's anything he inherited from his mother, it's his insane willpower and endurance. Aww. He once fought a karate fishman for five straight days. Man, with that endurance, he's gonna make some lucky lad or lady real happy someday. Or, I guess he would have if he didn't. Oh, hey, heads up. Huge spoiler warning in three, two, one. Yeah, he's dead. Like, yeah. totally dead. Yeah. Like many Logia users, Ace grew cocky in his ability to avoid being hit. In fact, he practically forgot what pain even felt like. And so, despite all of Ace's fantastic feats, his most impressive was when, for once, he chose to take a hit, sacrificing himself to save his brother, Luffy. Damn. Would you do that for me, Wiz? Hmm? Uh, oh, sure, of course. Wow. You're a goddamn liar. <laughs> I can't allow that. I'll take care of this on my own!
Okay. All right, the combatants are set. Let's end this debate once and for all. But first, oh. all this talk of chowing down on some scrumptious flames is making me hungry. I'll edit that out. Now, I'm a man who likes a good home-cooked meal, but going out to buy or hunt my own food is a hassle. If only there was some way food could be brought straight to me. Good news, Boomstick. <laughs> Introducing Blue Apron, the number one fresh food delivery service in the country. Using only the freshest ingredients, Blue Apron delivers a kit of ready-to-cook meals straight to your door, along with easy-to-follow instructions. Plus, the ingredients are perfectly proportioned, so it cuts down on waste, and you know you're using the right amount. On top of that, you can log into their website and select the upcoming meals that sound good to you, like the crispy salmon and roasted potato salad with pickled mustard seeds and cream fraiche sauce. Plus, it does feel rewarding cooking new and exciting meals right in your own home. But don't just take our word for it. We want you to try it. Because you're watching Death I'm Battle, hungry. you can get three meals free with free shipping by heading to blueapron.com forward slash battle. Seriously, you will love how good it feels and tastes to create incredible home-cooked meals with Blue Apron. So don't wait. That's blueapron.com forward slash battle. But right now, it's, it's time, time for a Death, death Battle! battle! Here we go. I'm going for not doing this one, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling that hey, it you, win somehow. Thief, come back here. <laughs> Give that back, or you'll have to deal with me. Nah. <laughs> I'm gonna mess you up! Fight! Fire! Fire Dragon Sword Heart! God! Wait, are you seriously made of fire? <laughs> Don't work! Time to turn up the heat! <laughs> Jeez, the pixels are so disorienting. Fire Dragon King's demolition fit! Are we going for the Fire King Fire Dragon King thing? Fire bit! <sighs> Not bad, hotshot. But you can't even touch me. Fire blast! Oh no. <laughs> Fiery doll. <laughs> Wait, are you seriously eating fire? <laughs> Try eating this. Oh shit, boy. Like I said, you can't touch me. Uh -huh. I'm not trying to. Lightning Dragon Fire Mode! Lightning Fire Dragon Roar! What the fuck? Oh, okay, well. All's well that ends well. Guess I'm feeling wrong. Woo! KO! Ew! That's a burn if I ever saw Woo! one. I win. This battle was anything but clear cut. Natsu held the advantage in speed and strength, and Ace trumped him in endurance and defense. Still, neither held an advantage so much that the other couldn't keep up. Both were mostly immune to each other's fire attacks. <laughs> because fire is Ace's only real weapon, this means he really didn't have anything that could kill Natsu. <laughs> Natsu was definitely strong enough to put Ace down, but with Ace's intangible fire form, Natsu couldn't even touch him. So, sounds like a stalemate. Very nearly. Luckily for Natsu, he had an ace in the hole. Hey, thanks, one. Oh, thanks. Natsu has had far more combat training than Ace, and is known for using his superior senses to study his opponents and take advantage of their vulnerabilities. My curses can change anyone stupid enough to touch me into a living bomb. No matter what I try, this human just consumes my curses. He might even be stronger than he was when this fight started. <laughs> 
When Ace realized Natsu could eat fire, he had to become more liberal with his true physical form to avoid being consumed. <laughs> and this was what Natsu was counting on. Being faster than the eye can track, Natsu was more than quick enough to get a good hit in up close. A perfect opportunity to use a fast, deadly elemental weapon Ace's body wasn't immune to. Lightning. <laughs> it's not like Natsu was gonna run out of magic or anything. I mean, there's freaking fire everywhere. <laughs> As his speed, strength, martial arts, and versatility surpassed Ace, all Natsu needed was one good shot, and he made it happen. In the end, Natsu was too hot for Ace to handle. God damn it, The Boomstick. winner is Natsu Dragnet. Woo! Guess that feeling was wrong. <laughs> I'm Chad, I play Boomstick. I'm Ben, I play Wiz, and stick around, we're about to announce who fights next time. Kay. And if okay. you want to watch exclusive commentary on this episode, click that little box, sign up for a first membership trial. It's a great way to support the show. Okay, who's fun? Wait. Um, Steve Breeze and Gal Galatius? Galatius? Woo! That was a fiery death battle. So I guess my my little feel my little gut feeling was wrong. So still a win for me. It's still a win for me. It still counts. I I voted. I still rooted for Natsu. So it still counts. But that ending, ew, that was that was a horrible way to go. Oh, that was just awesome. So the next death battle is gonna be uh, what was it? Oh. Sub Zero, not Deep Freeze. Sub Zero versus Galatius. Sub Zero from Mortal Kombat and Galatius from I have no idea where. And so I'm gonna be on May 24th. So, oh yes. Yeah, so it's another thing I want. I forgot to bring up that in the next, in exactly two weeks, when they show the Galatius preview, that it'll be, it's gonna be, it'll be my like 24th birthday. Yeah, believe it or not, I'm actually 20. Well, right now I'm 23, but in the next two weeks I'll be turning 24. So, and the week after that will be the death battle between Sub-Zero and Galatius. Is that how you pronounce his name? Galatius? Because it almost sounds like I'm saying delicious. <laughs> but, but yeah, so I guess in a way a late birthday present from Scrivatech? No, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. So anyway, that is, that, this death battle is just awesome. I mean, and, and I said, kind of, kind of said during this that the pixelated fighting form is kind of disorienting a little bit. But I kind of, I kind of kept up with it a bit, so um, <clears throat> that's all I've got for this episode. So until the next time, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts of this death battle in the comment section down below. If you like this video, kick that like button in the ass like a boss. And if you really liked it, go ahead and subscribe. And until the next video, stay awesome, be nice to animals, and don't be dicks. Bye bye.